Seven years. It's been seven years since I've drawn my bow in a buck. My passion for bow hunting started at a young age. I remember when I was four or five years old, my dad would have me out in the yard and we'd be target practicing with our bows. And I also remember, you know, him taking me out in the woods and we would do some scouting together. And we would also, uh, you know, go and sit in the woods together. I was too young to hunt at that time, but he would bring me out there and I'd take along with him. Now, as the story kind of goes on for my life, I shot some some decent bucks uh, growing up, some nice eight pointers, 100, 110, 115 inch bucks. But then I got to this point where I decided, you know what, I'm gonna hold out for a big buck. I wanna get a nice one. Something that would be Pope and Young class or bigger. That was kind of what I was shooting for. From the time that I decided that I was gonna hunt for a big buck, I had three years of college in there. So I wasn't able to get out and do much hunting during that time. And then when I got back into a normal swing of life where I was able to be in an area where I could do some hunting, I put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of scouting. And for three years, never had a single encounter with a shooter buck in three years. And mind you, during that time, I was on giant bucks for our area. I mean, I was hunting 160 inch bucks that I had on trail camera. I had found hundreds of rubs and scrapes. I was covering tons of miles of ground, sitting up in the best spots that I could find, coming up with the best strategies I could come up with, and just nothing was happening. And I remember being at the end of those three years and I was pretty stinking frustrated. Leading up to the 2017 season, I was, maybe not real hopeful that anything was going to happen. Uh, you see, I was going to be building a house during that whole entire spring, summer, and winter. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to have any time to, to be out hunting and, and scouting and preparing. So I looked at it, I'm like, man, all this time that I'd spent the previous years trying to make it happen and I couldn't make it happen. And now going into this stage of life where I'm not going to have any time what are the chances of this actually happening? At the end of the 2016 season, me and my wife were looking for some property to purchase so we could build a house on. We found this 18 acres that was for sale and so I decided to go out and walk it and took a look around the property, scouted it, walked it forward and backward. And when it was all said and done, I'd found 30 rubs and scrapes. So begins the hunt for Macho Man. Tonight I got set up out here behind the house. This is the first time that anyone has hunted back here. It's October 10th and we just had a cold front that came in yesterday. When this cold front came in I checked the camera and uh, we had a buck come in. Uh, we called him Macho Man. We had one picture of him in the summer. He's uh, not a real big antler-wise buck, but he's just a gigantic body. He's very mature. Uh, I would be more than happy to uh, shoot that buck. It looks uh, like a 
times in between there. So I was thinking maybe this morning would be a good time to get in here and get him since it's a Monday morning, but usually he shows up by this time. Uh, the wind wasn't real great. We'll hopefully get this nice buck on the ground and be able to show you some footage. On the third day that I was going to hunt back behind the house, I decided to uh, not bring my hunting camera gear with me because I didn't want to ruin it. It was snowing and sleeting and raining and it was just a nasty day. So I didn't get any footage that day, but I also didn't see any deer. So it wasn't like I missed much. The next day I got back out there again though and decided to give it another shot and see. Set up for a third hunt back here in a row. And so far it's it hasn't nothing but moving yet, but we haven't had Macho Man on camera in five days. And uh, he was coming every three days, so I figured if he hadn't come by now that today would be the day that he would come. So a few minutes after eight, off to my north, I hear a twig snap. And then just a couple seconds later, I hear a big branch break. And so I get all excited. My heart starts racing and I had to like pep talk myself in that moment, like calm down. So I get my camera gear all set up. I get everything ready to go. And I'm just waiting for him to step into the opening and I see a flash of antler. <laughs> and it's macho, man. I know it's him. at the site of where I shot the buck here. And um, 
If we get in close here, you can see that there is some fur. That hair looks a little white to me, which would mean that on the back side, where the arrow poked out, that it was uh, down a little lower. So I called up my dad and he came over and we looked over the footage and I was still pretty confident at this point. And so we went out and started looking and about 30 yards from where I shot him, we found the first blood and, and he started to open up at that point. And so we started tracking him. We got a little further into the woods, about probably 60 yards from that spot where we found first blood and there was a bed right there. And that's when it kind of got a little interesting because we started to question a little bit where was that shot actually at? You know, I mean, if it was a heart shot like I thought it was, he should have died right there. So a little bit, little bit bummed at this point, but we kept going. So we ended up bumping him out of his bed twice before we decided to just back out. And at this point, I went back to the house and I thought, man, Maybe I brisket shot this buck. You know, I couldn't really see very good on the on the little screen on my camera, so I, I started to lose a little bit of confidence in what what I thought the shot was. I ended up pulling up the the shot on my my computer, and I could see that it was a good shot. So we decided to give him a little bit of time, and I had work that day. I'm a youth pastor, so I had to be there. Uh, at church with the with the youth group that night and so I wasn't able to go back out to to see if we could find the buck so my wife she took off of work a little bit early and and my dad went out there and they started searching for the buck and my wife she sends me this picture and I I pull up my phone at one point and I see this picture of this buck and I just start yes just jumping around and telling all the kids they found the buck and all the kids are just yelling and yeah they're all happy for me so it was just a really a really fun moment I think that the key to this hunt was that macho man was betting close to where I ended up getting him and I say that with confidence because when I first bought the property I went out to just walk on the property a little bit and do just a little bit of scouting and I found a 51 inch bed in the snow and interestingly where I ended up shooting him was about 10 yards from where that bed was in the snow now I don't think that he was bedding in that exact spot still but he was bedding somewhere around uh, close to where I was hunting him at so I think that if there's anything that I could suggest on, for, for you guys on this is just make sure that you're figuring out where these bucks are bedding if you're getting close to them then then you have a better chance that this buck would come out at 8 in the morning or 9 in the morning like sometimes I had him coming through so it's really just a, a, a very important piece of the puzzle when you know where they're bedding well, we got the buck back to the house now, and um, I shot it at 8:12 this morning. We weighed him, and uh, he's 220 pounds uh, field dressed. So uh, that's a pretty pretty big body on this buck. He's got a nice neck on him. Uh, he'll make a nice mount. This is my very first uh, mature buck that I would classify that I've ever shot. Uh, my biggest by far. So um, I'm pretty happy with it very thankful so yeah I'm excited to uh, share this hunt with you guys